Ball is in God. Ball is in God. Everything we do, do it all for the glory of God. Hey everyone, and we are back, people. We are back. <laughs> it's been a while. I know many of you were asking John, when's the park coming back? Many of you were asking, um, many of you were asking me when the podcast was coming back. It's here. You know, we have returned. Uh, so yes, uh, the Boys in God podcast is a here. One can call this season two mm. and let's get it going. So I'm excited to get the uh, the podcast back and it's going to be an excellent time. Before we introduce our wonderful guest, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for not just uh, listening to the podcast, but for supporting the Boys in God page, the getting the merch, you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen all of the posts of everyone with their shin pads, the hats, the t-shirts, the, 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 the grip socks, all of that. We just appreciate everything that you're doing and every little helps uh, to grow the platform and ultimately do what we're supposed to do, which is spread uh, God's message, God's love around the world. So thank you. Yeah, John really appreciates that. And yeah, keep it up, guys. And uh, John can't be with us today, but that is okay. Because the guest that I have, he is a bundle of energy, man. I've only spoken to him a few times, but already I feel the vibes. I'm there to say, like, yes, I'm here. I'm ready. I am proud to introduce Kenji Gore onto the Ballers in God podcast, everybody. Welcome, Kenji. You got KJ and KG on the team. Yes, yes, yes. We are live. We are back. And it's an absolute honor and privilege uh, to be here with you guys today. KJ, thank you so much for that amazing intro. Um, and again, um, I just want to also echo what you just shared there, that we're so appreciative for all the support um, that everybody gives uh, Ballers in God. I know John is really, uh, really thankful for that as well, as, as am I. Um, so really appreciate all the amazing comments and the feedback that we're getting. So God bless you guys. Yeah, man. Like, and again, this is one, probably my favorite platform, like of all time, you know what I mean? Like besides where I work, um, that's also a social media platform besides there, uh, this is probably my favorite platform <laughs> combining the two. I love it. They were the greatest thing in, in, mm. in our faith and the best sport in the world. Amen. Together and, and, and we get ballers in God. And we actually get Beautiful. to talk to the pros, the guys playing the game that we all love. You know what, bruv? I wish, I wish I was to have your ability. I really do. I honestly. Really? One, I honestly, it's the one job, one career that if I could ever have, like I would just take, I would take it. Even Serious? For, like, listen, bruv, you don't understand. I, I am a very normal footballer in the grand scheme of life. Very normal. I go fight, play goals and power league. That's the level that I achieved. You, man, are up there on the biggest stages on the world, and it's crazy. If I could just even have even semi-pro level ability, wow. I would I would love it. Like, honestly, I would love it. That's how much I love this sport, and I wish I could wow. do some of the things that you can do. I could do okay. One day we'll meet, and we'll do a little tiki touch. <laughs> a little tea touch. <laughs> Before I fumble the bag with my poor touch. You know what I'm saying? But besides that, nah, honestly, like, the, you, you, what you guys do is, is incredible. And your your ability and your your talents that God has given you has led you all the way uh, to Portugal right now. So I just want to ask, how was he in Portugal? I know last game, you, man, you guys had a mad game. Red cards, late <laughs> goals, everything. Yo, yo, Kenji, talk to me. Talk to me. You're playing for Burr Vista now in Portugal. Talk to me about your last game because that seemed absolutely crazy. Honestly, it's crazy out here, man. Like, Portugal lives football. It breathes football. Um, everyone loves football. Like, everyone supports a team. So, it's yeah. like, in England, you know, there's also other sports that people are interested in. In Portugal, football's the only thing. Like football is, you know, number one in everything. Um, so we had like a derby game here. So we played it. It was Boa Vista against Guimarães, Victoria Guimarães. And it's, they've had like this rivalry from, from the get-go, to be honest. Um, and it's because like both teams are like always fighting for Europa League. That They're always fighting oh, for yeah, that Europa yeah. League. Yeah. So it's always been that like challenging. And to be honest, the fans are very, very fanatic. Like for their club, and they're really like they will, they'll keep, they'll die for their club. Like they'll fight yeah, for I, their club. I saw uh, one time I think it was sporting sporting fans go. They went into the changing room, yeah, and roughing exactly. 
I was like, <laughs> Mad. I, saw that, I was just like, you know what, yeah? Let me not mess with no, no fans from Portugal. Serious. Still Serious. Seriousness. Wow. Serious. And Boa Vista is, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah, the fans will let you know if they're not mm. happy. The fans will let you know. You know, we've had incidences where, you know, fans are waiting after the game. You know, they want, yeah. they want answers. They want answers. They want, they want to be heard. And on one side, you know, you're, you're thinking like, this is what you, you know, you're doing it for so much bigger than yourself. You're doing it so much mm. bigger for, you know, these, this is what they, this is what they live for. You know, they yeah, come for yeah. these games and they pay, you know, they pay their money to come and watch us, watch us play. So mm -hmm. I can understand it from their perspective. Um, but honestly, it was a huge game, man. Huge game. And uh, everything leading up to it was massive. We'd come back from, um, you know, from from not some some bad results. So this was yeah. like a must win for us, for the fans yeah. um, and everything. And and yeah, but <laughs> by God's grace, we won, man. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won. So I'm protected. <laughs> yeah, oh, we love that, man. We love that. You're covered, man. You're covered. But on, on, on the fans and your relationship with them, when it's so, this is something that sometimes because I'm a, obviously I'm a big football fan. This is something that we probably don't really think about. It's like the impact mm. that we actually have on you guys. Yes, we get annoyed or frustrated uh, about poor performances, but in terms of when it gets like bad and you see play, uh, fans like like the sporting fans breaching the the training grounds squaring up to you letting your frust their frustrations know uh, be knowing and sometimes even be physical how do you how would you deal with that how do you deal with that as a as as another person because you're not just a footballer you're not just mm -hmm. a robot you're not a, a player on fifa even though you are uh but you're not just a player on fifa you're you're an actual person you know so how do you actually deal with those kind of situations to be honest it's it's not easy Especially when you're getting questions of questions about you're not giving your best or doing your best, you know, because at the end of the day, like this is what we do, you know, this is what we've done our whole lives. Like we've sacrificed to get where we are. We've sacrificed our lives um, to get this, you know, and, and it's like to get to professional, you know, it's, it's, it's not just a click of your finger. Like you said, like you wish to be a footballer and it's not for everybody as well. And once you start to realize that as well, and that, you know, you've, been blessed with a talent you've got to work hard every single day and you're sacrificing every single day to be your best to do your best and then when you're not getting that support from the fans that are actually supposed to support you you're like I'm actually doing this for you like you're not yeah. even appreciating me yeah. you're not appreciating the hard yeah, work yeah, and the dedication yeah, yeah. you know like I also yeah. want to be with my family and, and when it's my cousin's birthday or when it's my brother's mm. birthday or when it's my mom's birthday I also want to be there you know, but I'm here training, mm. you know, and there's things that you that you sacrifice, there's things that you miss out on um, that sometimes fans might not see, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not always easy. It's definitely not yeah, always yeah. easy. But but I'm guessing that when everyone is on board, everyone's on song and everyone's together, the, the, the feeling that you must get from uh, fans is, is, is next level. It's undescribable. You know, they've, when I joined, like I've got... Um, thank God, you know, that the fans are, are taking, taking me in. Like they're, they're really, um, they're really loving me to be honest with you. You know, I, I say that, I say that a little bit like with big headed, but it's not, I don't want to, I don't yeah. mean it like that, but yeah. they've, they've made a song about me and, and, yeah, yeah, and it yeah. honestly, it fills my heart to hear people singing my name and being mm -hmm. valued for what you do, you know, your craft that God's given me. Like I feel, mm. it fills my heart to be honest. Yeah. Um, them singing my name, you know, you're like, wow, this, this, is that me? Like, is that me? Yeah. Can you, you know? Bruv, bruv. Yeah, I heard you singing a few notes before the before the part. You know, I think you should give us a little rendition of uh, of your song. Still, I don't know it personally. They go. All right, I'll give you. 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 They go. Ole, 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 ole. Kenji, Gore, Ole, 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 Ole. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, yo, mad. You know, I get gassed. You know, honestly, it gives yeah. me so much energy. It gives me so much yeah. confidence as well. Um, so yeah, it just get, gets me into that another level. Yo, that, that's sick, you know, that's sick. I'm not even gonna lie, yeah. 
growing up when I was younger, I had um, dreams of being a footballer. I'd, I'd make, oh, wow. how could I get my name into these chants and stuff? But obviously when it actually happens, it must be like, it, it's surreal. And yeah. that, that's just amazing to hear. And yeah, guys listening, remember that these guys are people too. And they need as much support as we do. So yeah, man. So when you're about to cuss someone, remember, you know, think back. You know, Kenji was chatting about his experience. Maybe this is not the best, the best way to help them in this situation. But yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. Um, but yeah, like, so your Instagram is popping, bruv. I'm not even gonna lie. Wow. Like your Instagram is your Instagram is lit. Like that means a lot, um, man. Yeah, honestly, like you, your photos are cool. You go to all these different places. Um, obviously you're living in Portugal, beautiful country. Um, but there's one thing that was a big constant in your um in your Instagram that I absolutely love. And uh your relationship with your wife is mm. on there, you know. What I mean, you you you're loud and proud, your husband, uh, you let it be known. And um, and I just love to see that, you know. What I mean, I just love to see that from from a young man uh, who's is about to get married myself. Um wow. Yeah, it, it's just wonderful to see. So we don't get to hear the stories sometimes of how footballers meet their wives because you, you, you're used to like, uh, met her in this place and that place and she was a wag and da 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 mm. But how, how did you and your wife meet? Because I'm really curious. I'm really curious. So we met when we were 12 and 13. And... The first time I met her was actually the like the ice rink and where we lived was like we every Friday we'd go to like the the ice skating uh by by that was like round the corner from my house in Altrincham and we used to go there and and that's when we first actually met then not so long after she then moved to my school mm. so she came to my school um and that's when we kind of you know started to to get to know each other and the way I grew up was like my life was like, it was all about football. It was mm. football, football, football. Like my parents were really um, installed that in on me where it was yeah. like, you need to focus on football. And everyone that I spoke about, spoke to and, and everyone was like, you need to focus on football, focus on football. And when Bella came into my life, it was like, we, we started to get together and she was 12, I was 13. So mm. that's, how, that's when we, we, we started to get together. And, and I think we started, we really started our relationship at 13 and 14. I was 14, she was wow, 13. Wow, that's, that's, that's crazy. That You don't really yeah, get to man. hear that anymore, especially because around the age that you would have been, that would have been like a, a, like a mad story to tell, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, me and her have been together since then. Like, um, that's that's crazy to hear, bro. And how did, how did growing with your partner from such an early age affect the relationship? Because I know, that obviously you mature, you you might start to like separate things, or you might have started to have different visions for your lives than you actually mm -hmm. are now. Because when you're in school, it's easy to to be like, yeah, this is my babes, you know, like walking around, bowling around like the man. I know, I see you smiling. I know you thought you was the guy. <laughs> you know, bro. you know you how it goes. goes. You know how it goes. You thought you was the man. For so. sure, I was yeah. like, I'm a footballer. Got my misses. Easy, you know, the cool kid on the block. You know what yeah. I mean? I was hey. the cool kid. I was the cool kid. But you know what? That's why it's such, a, it's such an interesting question why you say that, because we are not the same and it's not the same relationship at yeah. 13 and 14 than it is at 16. It's not the same relationship then when you're 18. It's not the same relationship when you're 21. And that's why, like we say, we, we say together, like we've been on like eight different relationships in the same relationship, mm -hmm. you know, so we're as we continue to evolve as people, as we continue to evolve in ourselves, our relationship continues to grow. And that takes coming together and seeing what vision you have for your life, what vision you have for your career, what vision you have for your, you know, in all areas of your life. And then does that align to your partner, you know? And, and God has taken us on this journey, to be honest with you. God's taken us on a huge journey um, within ourselves, but also in our relationship uh, to gr make us grow into what we are today. Um, so yeah, it, honestly, it's all glory to God for where we are right now, to be honest. Yeah. And what would you say the most important thing has been in on this journey as well? Um, like that's kept it going and going. Um, is it is it like a devotion to God? Like both of you devoted to God? Like is that like the key thing we'd say for relationships or have you got other things as well that you think of? There's definitely practical things that um, that would help any relationship. But for us, everything changed 
when we invited God into our life. Mm. When we had that encounter, well, I had my encounter, she had her encounter. And when we built our relationship on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, that is when everything changed. Mm. Everything changed. Because I had my thoughts. I had mm. my thoughts on relationship of how a relationship should look like, what a relationship is. And she has hers. But what does God say? Yeah. You know, and it's like, whoa, like, okay, now we're seeing what God says about relationship. We're yeah. like, hey, we've got some adjusting to do. We've got some yeah, things that yeah. we need to change. And that was towards um, marriage, to be mm. honest. That was towards mm. marriage. That was like, okay, so what is marriage? Yeah. You know, what is, what does it really mean? The word of God says two becoming one. What does mm. that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, what are your roles? What are my roles? You know, yeah. what are my expectations on you? What are your expectations mm. for me? You know, and it's like, what are your expectations of yourself? You know, all of yeah. these questions, you know, you've got to ask yourself. And that's why pre-marital counseling for me and my wife was just mm. fundamental, fundamental yeah. in our relationship. So the key is Jesus, you know, to mm. be honest, is to build, as you build your life on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, the same way you build your life on it is the same way you put mm. every single area of your life on that solid rock. Mm. Because as it says in the word, you know, if you're building on rock, it will grow. But if you're building on sand, um, mm -hmm. when the wind comes, when the wave comes, it's going to it's gonna okay. go. So um, for anyone listening to this that is uh, thinking about relationship or is in a relationship that's thinking about marriage or um, to, to really assess yourself in your relationship with Jesus and also make sure that your relationship is built on the word of God, that is mm. built on Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen, man. Amen. And while you're talking about that, you mentioned um, you you having that revelation. Uh, you both had that revelation, but you specifically had your your, your revelation and I'm curious, to, like, how did you actually become a Christian? Where did that all start? Um, because two young people being together and also getting a revelation is, it, it is is a godsend in itself. So, like, mm -hmm. for you, for yourself, where did where did that start for you? So, for me, to be honest, bro, like, growing up, it was like I would have said I was a Christian. So, mm -hmm. if someone asked me, like, you know, what are you? I'm a Christian, but mm -hmm. I always believed like God was real. You know, I believed yeah. in in heaven and hell. I believed in those things, but I didn't know who he was. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what that meant. You know, I didn't know the weight that it held. So as you're growing up, as you're going through life, um, you know, you're just thinking like, you know, you're seeing the Ten Commandments is like, oh, mm. fall a bit short. You know, don't really know yeah. why or how, but I don't really understand. I didn't really understand. Didn't have any understanding. Um, but it got to a point where, I was on loan at Ado Den Haag in Holland. Yeah. And in that process, I was living with my cousin. So my cousin was someone that I looked up to. He always had the waves. He always <laughs> looked fresh, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but he was a guy that had nothing what the world mm. can offer, but he had everything to me. Mm. He had everything. I was like, this guy is bro, this is the one I want to be. I want to be like him. And I remember um, he was someone that like lived with us in England as well for a while. Yeah. He always like, he always came over. He actually studied in England. So he was with us a lot. Yeah. So growing up, he was a big, um, someone that I looked up to, someone that yeah. I looked to. And when I went to Holland, um, he, he lived with me and we had an amazing time together through a really tough time. Uh, for me in my football career as I wasn't playing. Yeah. Um, but but having him around just made everything better. You know, he had the amazing smile on his face always and it would just radiate the whole room. Like he had this yeah, presence yeah, yeah. about him that would just radiate the whole room. Um, but through that process, he got cancer. And, and it went really fast. I remember going back to Swansea. Um, the loan mm. finished, went back to Swansea. Um, and I went to my coach, I said, my cousin is, is, you know, he's got cancer and he said, he's not got long to live. He said, go and see him. And th I thank God for, for my coach that time I went to go and see him. And it was just, 
um, I remember just because I had that relationship with him that I always wanted him to smile, you know. So I was mm. always like, it was still like I wanted to make him smile through this process. Yeah. And yeah. I could see, I could see slowly, you know, he was going away, going away, mm. going away. And I went back to Swansea and um and then I got a phone call to say, listen, you need to come and see him right now because mm. it's really going uh faster than expected. Yeah. And I remember, I remember we went um we went to his home. And it went really fast then. Um, and I remember, so fast forward, we were in a room. Mm. We were in his room. And it was me, my wife, a couple of my cousins, my parents, and some close family members. His wife and child was there. Mm. And we were all in that room. And we experienced his body being there. Mm. But he wasn't there. Mm. So as I'm seeing a body that's there and I'm not seeing him, mm. I'm asking the question, looking around, for, well, where is he? <laughs> yeah. Like, where's his spirit? Like, what? He's, mm. I see his body, but where is he? And f I remember there was something in that room. There was an atmosphere in that room. I remember praying that people were praying there and I was like, wow, well, what is here? And I, remember, and I asked my dad and he said, listen, when you're ready to see, you will see. Mm. And from that day, I started to seek. Yeah. I started to seek. And because my wife also experienced that, that yeah. as well, she started to seek in mm. her own way. And as I started to seek, you know, the word of God says, seek and you shall find. Yeah. I was finding. I was finding answers, finding what made sense. I was like, oh, whoa, okay, it's this. Oh, all right. You know, we're, we're a body, but there's a spirit inside of us. Yeah. Okay. So because I never understood, I never understood. Mm. So I'm like, wow, so this is an experience. All right, so I'm in this realm. Right, so this is, you know, so I started to really ask questions. And that's when God started to really cultivate into my into yeah. my life and, and be in my life. Um. And to be honest, it were, he, he took me on a process since then, yeah, since yeah. that day was a, was a big encounter. So that's kind of what sparked everything. Yeah. Wow. That powerful, powerful story. And obviously God bless your cousin um, as well. Um, that's really, it's, it's, that's crazy how people are put into your life sometimes for a specific reason. Like God knew that, you know, you two will be in the same family because I've got a purpose for that. And even when, um, even in something as as even something as deep that can cut deep as as such as cancer, even in that kind of atmosphere and that kind of situation, he's still in there with us. And and you could have easily saw this as an opportunity as you know what? Why would God take away this beautiful smile that that mm -hmm. I enjoy? Like why has He done that? But instead, it 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 made you think. And yeah, God works in such powerful, powerful so ways. True. And and it's yeah, just just hearing that story, I'm just thinking, yo, like one, don't take anything for granted. Don't take your Nothing. family for granted. Do not. And then two, like he really can use any situation for for his good. And and yeah, man, thank you for sharing that because yo, that's 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 touched me right there, man. Wow. That's touched me right here, man. Honestly, that's that's an amazing story. And the fact that you got to sh you short you shared that with your wife as well, and mm -hmm. just like there's a. There's, the way that God's just really had his hand over that situation is really beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. And that was, what age yeah. was that as well? That was, that was like 21. 21. Okay. 21. Yeah. yeah 21, 22 around yeah. that age, mm. around that age, man. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the age where I think many people start to formulate their own kind of ideas of like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm either in this or I'm not, you know what I mean? Yes. I'm going to do this forever. Or I'm just gonna yes. go my own way, go my own way, and and yeah, that's a that's a very that's a very key age. And we could just with your your family as well. Was your was you so your entire family was Christian too? Or so yeah, my my parents my parents are Christians. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say that they are. Um, it's a, like growing up and stuff. It's not like we went to mm. church. They yeah, kind yeah. of left. They kind of left it. So it's your yeah relationship with god so they would always through experiences like this through experiences in life they would then give certain things 
scriptures, certain word of encouragement, certain things that I knew that God was in that. So, so that's kind of how I grew up. I grew up in that where it was like, I knew God was real, but yeah. I don't really understand. I don't really get it. You know, like, and, and I, and I, di- and I felt a lot like, well, I'm nothing like my cousin who was, you know, living a certain way and, and living to certain principles where I was like, how is that even possible? I'm way far from that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand. And to be honest, once I started to seek, who's the, who's the person that I ask? The one that was living the way that I thought. And she is being the most, her and her husband have been like the most um, impactful people in mm-hmm. my in my relationship in my walk with God, mm. to be honest. Um, and yeah. we meet every week now uh, for hey. fellowship, for fellowship and, and sharpen each other and open up the word of God. And if there's any questions on my heart, they're the people that I um, yeah. trust um, to give me good counsel and, and um, wisdom from the word of God. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, talking about family, um, for me, if anyone doesn't know, uh, Kenji's dad was also a footballer. Uh, playing for many teams in uh, was he played in England for a bit as well? Yeah, he played in yeah. Hollanders. Yeah, played in yeah. Holland. So, so he played in for for Ajax at the time, yeah. and when he played for Ajax, he then moved to Huddersfield. So yeah. that's why, from five years old, I then moved from Holland to to England, and that's why I've yeah. obviously got an English accent because I grew <laughs> up in in I grew up in Manchester yeah. in England. So yeah, and then um, you played for Manchester City and and Man United. We'll get into that, but what is it like? growing up with a dad who's also a footballer um did you feel any kind of pressure to to succeed and become even better than him as well like what what was that like to be honest i never growing up i never saw it like that like growing up it was like i just want to be a footballer like i just want to do my best be the best and Mm. that was it i only thought about football and i remember like as football my football journey started to go on where I was like wow like having my dad experience what I'm experiencing is done me like it's it's helped me beyond words yeah because it's like asking someone that's already lived it. it's like asking someone that's already experienced already felt it he already knows what I'm going through he already yeah, knows yeah. how I'm feeling and I don't even have to explain and that was something that I valued so much to have someone that I can just follow his footsteps you know so it was like I value him so much not just as a player but for the man that he is like I was always like I just want to be just like him yeah yeah, yeah. I want to live like him I want to talk like him he was like my idol you know he was like my um someone that I looked up to and just wanted to be um, so it always like, it always really helped me, it always encouraged me. It was never, I never felt any pressure, um, from him. I never felt any pressure from anyone around me until I moved to Holland. Yeah. So when I moved to Holland, people started to compare me to him. You yeah. know, they started to ask questions. Are you better than your dad? Because in mm. England, it wasn't really like that. He, he played yeah. for Huddersfield. So it wasn't like he was like a huge player in England, but in Holland, he played for right. Feyenoord, played for Ajax. Yeah. So it was like, the biggest he, team, so. it, mm. it, it was like, it was like that. So I felt a little bit more uh, of that, which I'd never yeah. felt in my life before. Mm. Um, so, so it was from then on, to be honest. Uh, and how did you handle that change? Like going from being... The, 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 this kid that you got your dad's football but no one's really caring about it to now like actually boom it's like we care now like like you better be as good as daddy otherwise what issues like how, how did you handle that to be honest I always knew that I was my own person so I was already yeah. really passionate about like I'm me like yeah. <laughs> like I'm not him um but I also was like I um I really respected everything that he achieved. So yeah. it was always just a positive for me. I always turned it into, into a positive. Like it was like, I'm just blessed that I've got a dad that has already achieved the things that I desire to achieve, mm. you know? So it was always like, it was, yeah, it was a really, it was a real positive to me, to be honest. Yeah. Like I didn't take it as a, as a, as a negative um, yeah. at all, to be honest. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. And you've um, mentioned quite a few role models that you've had, your, your cousin, your dad, and, and hearing that is so beautiful. And I feel like 
growing up as a young man, especially, I feel like role models are so important. Um, someone to look up to, someone to um, to really guide, help guide you, even if it's not through direct speaking, mm. even just by their example, it's just good to have. And um, how how do you go about like like how would you go about now? to help guiding young people find these kind of role models, these people that can look up to, because in England right now, there's the, the youth are going through it. There's a lot of things mm. going on, especially in certain uh, certain parts of the country. Um, so oh, what advice could you give the young, especially young men about selecting the right role models to have? I think it's, it's such a, it's such a deep one, this one, bro, because mm. You want to relate. Mm. You want to be. You want to relate to someone with what they've been through, what they're experiencing, and how they're experiencing it. And the biggest thing that I would advise a young man um, looking for a role model, seeking a role model, is to look at the fruits, mm. because the word of God shares that we need to. We we can see by the fruits, you know, and to not look at the external factors. Yeah. You know, so it's like, all right, so because he's got this car or because he's got mm. this watch or because he's got this amount of followers or because he's playing at this club, like, it's not about what they have externally. It's what they have internally. So it's like, value more what someone has inside of them rather than what they have external. Mm. Because that's what really helped me. Because I was someone that grew up and looked at players that I wanted to be like and said, I've got to do what they're doing in order to become what they are. And then I looked and I was like, well, they're going to nightclubs and spending this amount of money in a club. Mm. And they're do and I felt like I had to do that to be successful. Their relationship is a shambles, though. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to be anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was so conflicted because they have something that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. So I felt like I needed to do what they mm. do in order to get this goal. And that's why I want to encourage anyone that's listening to this, that that's not your story. That's not your story. And that's why you got to look at the fruits of someone's life. You got to look at the fruits of what they're, what's inside of them rather than what's on the outside of them. So yeah, that's what I would, um, yeah. that's the advice that I would give, bro. Uh, powerful, man. Powerful. And um, there is only one role model we all should have, man, woman, child, which is Jesus. Um, and, 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 and he's just so amazing and so good to us. And then obviously you've got the Holy Spirit who guides us and you've got the Father who is Amen. above us. And now uh, many people, Sticking on with the theme of role models and fathers and, and your father. Many people that either have bad relationship with their fathers or don't have no relationship with their fathers and therefore it affects their relationship with God. So I was just wondering, how has your relationship with your own father impacted your relationship with, with God the Father, our our Heavenly Father? So honestly, it's 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 made my relationship with God amazing mm. because i've had a representation representation of on earth of a father that loves me not for what i do not for what i bring not for anything that i do just because of me just because of me being me he loves me and there's nothing that i need to do to prove anything there's nothing that i need to um to give he just loves me for me and that was so beautiful because that is the same way that God looks at me. Yeah. God looks at me the same way. And that's what, you know, that's why I can't thank my dad enough for giving me that representation on this, on this earth. Yo, shout out to all the dads, man. You know what? Yeah. Amen, bro. That gets, dads get bad rap, you know. Lots of dads get bad rap. And yes, some of them, yes, they do deserve that. And we need, we need men to step up. But there are ones out there grinding, working hard, mm -hmm. loving their family, loving their wives, loving their children. And they don't, but I don't know about you, they don't get enough shout out. It's true. So shout, shout out, out to, out to all of the shout dads, out. man. Shout out to all the dads. Like, my dad, yo, he's in the, he's in the living room right now. 
Shout out to you too, man. Shout out, man. I think I think it's done all right, you know. I don't think it's done too bad. <laughs> so, so yeah, honestly, yeah, big up yourselves, man. Because yeah, we Amen. need fathers. We need men uh, to mm-hmm. stand up and rise up. And if you're doing that, you're know, big up yourselves. Uh, honestly, really and truly. Um, but yeah, man. So, bro, you we talked about a bit about, a bit about your dad, how he moved from. Ajax and moved from Holland to England. Obviously, you've been over here uh, before when you was five years old. What what was that like? You're now a young man. You've played for uh, you played for Man City in the academy. Now you're playing for Man United. What's what's going through your mind in this period? How are you finding your life uh, in England at this point? Honestly, at this point, like life couldn't be any better. I'm doing what I love to do every day. I'm going to school. I'm 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 going to training, and life was just go go go. It was like there was no time to stop. I remember um, my mum was just saying like, I, I like honestly, mums also don't get enough credit, you know. Especially yeah, yeah. as like, I remember like she had to then take my brother with us to training. You know, and he had to come with us because obviously we'd have to go to training. We had to, then we'd have to eat before we went to, like there would then be food after training. Like we'd have to pack lunch in the car because we'd have to eat, then go get home, do homework, go to sleep. And it was just like, there was so much in that, that my family also sacrificed for me to live out my dreams, to live out my goals and to live out, um, yeah, my talent. So for me, it was just like, at that young age, like it was just like football was life, man. Football yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Football was there's was nothing, there's nothing else going in my mind but football, yeah, yeah. man. Come on, come on. What was it about my okay? Listen, I'm a Man United fan, so I have to talk about what was it like being at Man United at that time? Um, time because we're actually still we're still good then, so, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we were still all right back then, you know what I mean? So, like, what was it like being in and around that, like on the, in the training field, in the, in the training grounds, and all of that? We've uh, I said, let me check who was there, who was there when you were there, bro? Like, oh, bro, we had I, oh, I, you was I've there for privilege. Cristiano Tevez yeah. and Rooney. <laughs> oh, no, nah, but no, you know what? I, this is why I said what I said at the start. Give me that. Give me that life, bro. That was to be mad. Can so, I... oh. yeah, man. Like, honestly, bro, like, looking back, it was surreal. You know, I'm surrounded by the world's best players. I'm surrounded by the greatest manager of all time. I'm surrounded by um, players that are just gifted, mm. talented, you know, and... At that time, it was normal. Mm. At the time, it was normal, man. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to training. Like it was just, it was just a normal. Like I would go to school. It was the same way I would go to training. Even though, like going to training, I just loved it every day. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I just loved going into training and you know getting the ball out, playing a possession. Like I just love football. So growing up, it was like it was normal, bro. But obviously, looking back, it was like this is this is. Yeah. unbelievable that I could have experienced this from such a young age you know I was had the privilege of being there for for 10 years so yeah I've seen I've seen a lot in them times man I've seen a lot yo 10 years man oh that's something crazy and then you, you was playing for the academy um and then you probably done something that many players at your age probably wouldn't have done and you actually left um mm. and you know I had to go to uh Swansea and I'm get I believe that was like was it like was that like early Brendan Rodgers, Gary Monk kind of yeah. Swansea? Yeah, yeah. So I went. Uh, I went when Loudrup was the coach. Oh yeah. Oh, how can so I forget that? So that was mad. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah, crazy. Yeah. To be honest, he was yeah. he was special, especially because obviously he was a special player. Mm. Um, so he was just he showed us how it was done, man. He showed yeah. us how it was done. Nice. So, but what what led? to you switching what was the thing that you said actually no um i'm actually gonna go to swansea mm. instead of staying at man united and see and see where that things go there so it got to a point where i'd been there for 10 years and it was coming up to signing your professional contract mm. and i realized you know there was so many players in front of me and every single year like at united like the pitches start at one end and it's really far from changing rooms. So it's like mm. on the 
on the 12, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. And every time you're getting closer, closer, closer to the first team. So mm. every year I made it, you know, I made it to the yeah. next stop, made it to the next stop. And that was the goal until you get to the first team. You know, the, obviously the ultimate goal is getting to the first team, but you're going through these stages to get there. And it got to a point, you know, where um, Sir Alex Ferguson takes me into the office. And, you know, I go into the office and I don't know what to say. I'm like, boss, sir. You know, you're like going into, and, <laughs> and honestly, the presence in there yeah. is... is, is there's, I'm about there's, to say, the, so the Fergie presence must have been... There's, there's ah, big you know presence I mean? in there. There's big presence in there. Um, and he goes, come here, son. You know, he calls <laughs> everyone son. <laughs> and he knows you. And, and you know what I res really respected about him? Like, was he knew everyone by name. Mm. Everyone. From the cleaning ladies to the chefs to the to the youth teams like he knew everyone by name he knew us and he was like kenji come sit down and and i sat down like with my skinny self like sitting hey. down like this <laughs> <laughs> and and he said kenji first of all i want to thank you for your 10 years i want to thank you for everything you've done for the club for the man that you've become um and i can do two things right now he said i can give you a new contract right now but I know that it's not going to do you any good. Mm. You're, there's, there's so many players right now that are in front of you and I can't promise you any game time. And then he named them, you know, at the time it was Adnan Yanuzai, Andreas Pereira, um, oh, Jesse Lingard. Mm. It was, um, you know, and, and obviously then in the first team it was Nani, you know, all of these yeah. guys that were ahead of me. And, and gigs, obviously. And, and he then said, you know, like this, these people in front of you, and your game time will be limited. So the what I can do is is the best thing for you is to is to go. Is to go because I know that you're gonna go and go and play and be and be in your talent is gonna flourish elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like my heart drops. My heart drops in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, like, what's going on here? And I'm holding back my tears, you know, I'm holding back um, everything. And I remember walking down, um, getting in the, getting in the lift, getting into my car. Um, I was in my Corsa at the time. Uh, the limited edition one, the black and white hey, come one. come on. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> that one was lit, you know, 1.2 oh, yeah. litre. I was gassed with that one. Jeez. But anyway, I get in it now. And I just start crying. Mm. Let everything out. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, who am I? Mm. Everyone sees me as the guy that plays for Manchester United. Everyone sees me as the footballer. And now that is getting taken away from me. I don't know who I am. Who am I? What do I tell my parents? They've sacrificed their whole life for me. They've stayed in Holland, in England, sorry, for me. My brothers had to sacrifice their things after school to come to, 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 to watch me play. What do I tell them? What do I tell my, my girlfriend? Mm. She's going to think that I'm a, that I'm a failure. Mm. And I remember driving home thinking, how, what am I, how am I going to tell them? You know, what am I going to say? And I parked right around the corner just to get myself together. Cause the whole way I was just, yeah. like, <gasps> you know, them uncontrollable yeah. ones. Uh, you know when the, the, te the teeth jitter no. and it's like, <laughs> you're, doing the, yeah, the, you're yeah, catching your breath yeah, and you're yeah. like, bro, that was the cry. Yeah. And, you know, I'm driving and then I was like, okay, getting the courage and I'm going, I'm going. And I remember driving then, uh, opening the front door and uh, knocking on my parents' door and I said, guys, I need to, I've got something to tell you. Um, I've just been let go from Manchester United and I just started crying again, just started crying and everything just went uncontrollably. Everything just came out um, and it was a hard process mm -hmm. to deal with that night. And my parents gave me that night. They gave me that night to process. Um, and the next morning, um, my dad is playing Bob Marley downstairs. Don't worry, <laughs> no, do, 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 do. <laughs> so he's playing Bob Marley. I'm coming down the stairs, and the environment is 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 nice. Yeah. He's cooking. He's in the kitchen. Yeah. He's making his omelets and everything. And I've come down, and he's like, "Hey, Kenji." He says this. He says, "You you're at the top. 
The only way is down. Where do you want to go? <laughs> and honestly, I said, whoa, like something just broke inside of me where I was like, yeah. I had this perspective of that was the only way because my whole life mm. I've dedicated to being playing for the Manchester United first team. That mm. was it. There was no, there was no other way. Like that was what's going to happen from five years old. That was that was it. Yeah. And I got there till I was eighteen. So my whole life was dedicated for that moment. And my dad just broke everything and said, "Well, where do you want to go from here? There's other ways." And I said, "Wow." He said to me, "When one door closes, another one opens." Yeah, that is true. So if anyone's listening to this right now, any young player that might have just been released or might have just been going through a hard time at the club, just know that when one door closes, another one opens. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that night, that day, sorry, I wrote down every club that I saw myself being at. Mm -hmm. So I looked at my position. I said, I'm a winger. How many wingers are at this club? How many wingers are at this mm -hmm. club? How many wingers are at this club? And Swansea was one of them on the list. Mm -hmm. And not long after I signed a two-year deal at Swansea City. Okay, wow. Well. So that's how that's, it came about, man. Yo, that's that's crazy. The fact that your dad was like, okay, cool, and it like let's let's keep going. The way what did he say? He said, You're at the top. The, the only way is down. down. Where where do you want to go? Where I do you want to go? I might take that, you know, because that is actually it's it's profoundly good. Like because anyone hearing it's that, at every like, level. Yeah, like it's like because it's like you're, you're hit. Where where do you want to go? Yeah, like anyone hearing that, we're like, oh, he's trying to say that I'm going down. But no, he's not. He's saying, you, if you're going down, you can go down there. You can go down here. You can choose. You can choose where you're going now. There's right. that sense of freedom that comes with 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 falling. Sounds mad <laughs> when you when you think about you're it. Right, yeah, there, there is. And yo, that's, oi, Papa, pa, Papa Gare, yeah? Oi, my <laughs> brother. Yeah, I'm taking that one, man. Use that yeah, for my man. Kids. Use that for my kids. Oh, man. That's lit. Quick one then. You was, you was listing some names, yeah, and I've just checked to make sure that I was, I was, I was correct in thinking. You was, was you part of the FA Cup youth, uh, youth winning team? No, I wasn't. Oh, I was watching. No. I was watching in the stands. Oh, I was watching no. in the stands. I didn't make it, man. So that was one of the goals, though. Like yeah. when I was, I was like, oh, please get me on the bench, get me on the bench, or something. Yeah. You know, get me involved. And I wasn't part of it, but honestly, I felt part of it. Yeah. To be yeah, honest, yeah. I felt a part of it. Like yeah. obviously training, getting to train with them a couple of times yeah. and and just seeing the process, like seeing what yeah. happened in the stands, like when we went to Anfield and Rav just yeah. did did a madness. <laughs> like best player of all time. <laughs> Second, yeah. Messi, Messi first. Yeah. <laughs> but but honestly, but honestly, like yeah. he what he can do with the ball, he's special, man. Mm. he's special what I've seen him do but yeah I, I, I was a part of that man I felt a part yeah. of that yeah <laughs> right, right, fair enough fair enough so how did it so did you get to play with like Paul Pogba Justin Lingard did it oh okay no. how, yeah. what was that like like and especially seeing where their careers have, have, have gone to like do you still feel like yo those are my guys man like like, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like we yeah. shared, we shared changing rooms together. We shared, yeah. we shared the pitch together. And honestly, like, like I said before, like it was normal. Yeah, it was so normal at the time. But you're playing with players that you feel like you can play with. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was only getting the best out of me. And and that's mm. why, like, when I was playing with these guys, I was like, wow, like these. But like Pogba was on pff, high level, man. Adnan Yanuza, high level. Yeah. Um, Andreas Pereira, high level. Mm. These guys were were high level. But there was also other guys that were on a high level that didn't make yeah. it. But that mm. they would say, what they would say, was like. Like Ravel yeah. Morrison, for example, right? Ravel mm. Morrison was was someone that everyone looked up to. All these players, yeah. like oh, well, all these men, like mm. Rav was the guy. Mm, that's true. That's true. I remember. Rav that. was number one. Yeah. Like he was, he was the guy. So, yeah, there was a lot of pl players that yeah. um, that obviously didn't make their reach their potential. But um, yeah, I had the privilege to being around them every day, man. Yeah, yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. So you're at Swansea now, yeah? Okay, you're at Swansea, and What's what's going through your mind? Like, do you were you just like, right, I'm hitting the first team straight away, or did you feel like you had to build? Like, how did how did your time at Swansea go? In your personal opinion, so honestly, bro, like I went there and I had something to prove. Mm. Like, I was like, I'm gonna go show how amazing I am. I'm gonna go show how good I am. Yeah. And I remember my first training session. I was like, wow, like, wait, I actually am good because. <laughs> Because, you know, like, 
yeah. when you get released and when you get you know let go from a place like your confidence gets shattered whether you yeah, like it or yeah, not yeah. your confidence goes you know and then i realized like whoa like i've been i've really have been playing with the best players in the world because yeah, i feel like yeah, i'm yeah. like i feel like i'm 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 really one of the best here mm. and i was like from that first training session i was like yeah i'm definitely going to be in the first team soon and slowly after like shortly after i was in the first team i was training with them every day um and i went on pre-season tour straight away yeah. with them with Loudrup. and honestly like i had an unbelievable time there they mm. had five years five years at swansea right and i look mm. back now and every year I had to prove. So yeah. it was such a hard time because it was like first year I had to prove how good I was, training with them every yeah. day. New manager comes in. I've got to prove myself again. Yeah. Who is this guy? I don't know him. Because obviously everybody, they see me training, but I have to prove myself in under 23s yeah, yeah, again. Mm-hmm. You know, so so it was like when Gary Monk took over, um, yeah. I then made my debut. You know, yeah. it couldn't have been, you know, things couldn't have been going any better. Um, and then I go on loan to Ado Den Haag. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I learned from that experience was you got to trust God over mm. a coach. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. You got to trust yourself over a coach. Because mm. I remember, you know, the coach was calling me. He said, hey, I've watched your games. I want you to come here. I want you to be here. I want you to. And it wasn't just one call. It was then three, four. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to go there. I need to go and play every game because I was so hungry at the time. Just made my Premier League debut, hot, thinking, hey, I need to play every 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 week here. Mm. And I go there and things don't go to plan. And in that process, obviously I'm in Holland, I'm with my cousin. Yeah. Um, it doesn't go to plan. But what God is telling me is after in hindsight you know as i've left <laughs> yeah he yeah, said left. you can't trust you can't trust him over me mm. you can't trust yourself so, over me so are you saying that basically that was was god telling you not to go there or what, did you did you consult god on the move like, like what was one what was so, the thing that happened there so so for me it was like it got to a point where i need to play every week yeah, where yeah. am I going to get the best opportunity? Mm. And I really wanted a coach that believed in me. I wanted a coach because I always had to prove to a coach. I was had mm. to prove to this coach, next coach, I had to prove them, prove, prove, mm. prove. I didn't want to prove anymore. I was like, I've, I don't want to prove. I want someone that desires Kenji Gore. Mm-hmm. And this coach was like saying everything I, my, yeah. I needed to hear. I was like, yeah, this was it. You know, like this is what I needed to go through. This is what I needed to hear. And as I made the decision to go to this club, things didn't go the way that I planned that, mm. that he said. And I'm going yeah, up to him and saying, yeah, like, yeah. bro, like you told me bro. that I was gonna play. Like you told me that I was gonna your 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 words aren't matching up. Mm. And then I started to really understand like the reasons why you go through certain experiences. The reasons why God will take you through a process Mm. because there's things that you need to know because I love football so much. So God is going to use something that I love in order to impact me. So God used football in my life in order to speak to me specifically Mm. because I loved it so much. Right. So Mm. God's saying you love football more than me. Mm. you love your is it all about you or is it about me Mm. and i'm going through this process where i'm like wow like hey i i i really trusted in the coach i really trusted in him more than and that's why anybody that's listening to this might be um you know might be in this process of a coach really desiring them to come which is amazing but don't put your trust in him over yourself and most importantly over god Mm -hmm. yeah wow yeah i gotta remember man like your man can promise you the world if you don't mean nothing you really don't and as you said earlier judge a man by his fruits not but not by what what is perceived to be Mm -hmm. the good thing so yeah Mm -hmm. really have discernment in making these decisions not just you young footballers listening uh making your moves but like just everyone in general have that discernment. Take your time uh, to really think about, 
is this the right thing? What is God saying? Where would this lead mm-hmm. me? And obviously you can't predict every pitfall in the world. Like it's, it's impossible, but you can make the right decisions yeah, with the, with good discernment and it will definitely help you in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, that's, I, I've been loving this, you know, like time has been flying, man. You know, people, it's, there's more, in, there's more to come. Stay tuned, man. Stay tuned. Don't stop listening. We've not even um, started yet, bro. We've not started. Yeah, this is the <laughs> intro, man. What are we talking about here, bro? What are we talking about here? Okay, no, but this, this next part, um, it's going to delve into an area that I think many people uh, may have experienced or may have, um, maybe are in it and they don't even realize that they're in it. Uh, so while you was at Swansea, um, you, you've m- mentioned before on, on a different interviews it, on your uh, own page, you've raised awareness to this, but you, you started gambling and obviously as a young man, you've got all this money, you've, you you thought okay why not why not just do it and how did how did that start how did the gambling start um and we'll just go through this we'll just go through this 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 story and just dissect it basically so how did how did the gambling start when at, at such a young age so to be honest with you bro it got to a point where obviously at Swansea um I'm desiring to be in the first team and it got to a point where I wasn't even training with the first team and I wasn't even playing in under 23s. So I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know how to get this anger out of me. I don't know how to get this frustration out of me. I don't know how to get the feeling of being on the pitch away. Like I can't get, and the only thing that came close to the, to the excitement and the butterflies and the, and the, was the roulette table. Mm. It was like when that ball's going round, I'm like feeling that like, you know, I'm feeling that. Mm. And and this is why I'm so passionate about this because there's so many ways that we will mask something Mm. of what we're actually going through and what we're actually dealing with. And obviously at the time I was dealing with a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of um, don't know how, what, how to handle my emotions, don't know what to do with things not going the way that I thought that they would go. And especially when people were going, you know, against me or, you know, and, and I wasn't playing, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know what to do. And for a footballer listening to this, only, only they will understand what you feel and what you go through. Because it's a lonely journey. It's a lonely journey. It's a journey that you can't explain to someone that's not living it. You can't explain to someone that's not experienced it. You can't explain to someone that's um, that's not living in it. You know, it's it's your every single day you are working to play on a Saturday. And if you're doing everything in your power all week and you're not getting the results, it's like, what am I doing this for? How am I doing? And now you're having the pressure of, if I don't play, how am I going to support my family? How am I going to support the people around me? How am I going to support, like, this is my only income. This is how I'm going to, you know, make my money. How am I going to support my family? And then you've got the pressure of that and you've got the pre- Then you've got the pressure to perform. Then you've got the pressure of the supporters. Oh, get rid of him. He's not good enough. Mm-hmm. You know, so you've got all this pressure of the identity of being a footballer. And I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know what to do. So what do I see around me? I see players going gambling. I see players going out, drinking, getting their mind off the game. Things aren't going well. Oh, what do I do? Yeah, might as well go out. Might as well go and get some love from other women that are attracted to you. Get some get some love through that. And that's what I was trying to get. I was just trying to be appreciated. I was just trying to feel valued. And that value didn't come from what I thought was valuable. And it's a whole deceiving way yeah. of, of it. Because it got to a point where, you know, when football wasn't going well, I wouldn't go to the same cafes that I would go to. I wouldn't have the same smile on my face because I've, my life is built on being a footballer. So if football's going well, my life's going well. Yeah. 
And that is the way that I was living. And, you know, you get it. I got caught into gambling, got caught into that world, you know, got caught into going out and drinking and partying and, and all of that stuff to try and get my mind off what I was really dealing with. Mm. And how did that like impact like the people around you? Because obviously when, 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 when you go through these things, it's not just yourself feeling it. The, 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 one, the ones around you will, will, will see it. They will, you are interacting with them in whatever state you're in. So they will also feel it as well. So how did that impact like your, your, your girlfriend at the time, the, like your, 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 your family, like the people around you, the ones that you care about you? What, how did that impact them? It impacted them unbelievably. But I was, also a play, I was also a person that masked it. Mm. So I would still come in smiling. I would still come in with the same energy. So, so pe- a lot of people wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't notice anything was really going on. Yeah. Um, but, my wi- but my wife now did. My girlfriend at the time did. Um, and she, it actually got to a point where I lost her for me to wake up. Where it was like, Kenji, like, I don't want to be with this person. Because it got to a point where, um, where because I was so in it so much, I was lying, I was doing all sorts of madness, and she was like, "I can't live this life anymore." And then she went to um, she went to Bali, she went to Canada to study, and she was literally in her process of understanding who she is because she was also lived her life for me. Mm. It was like, everybody lives their life for me. It's like, who am I? So she went on that process of who she is. She went to go figure out who she was. And I went on the same process yeah. of who am I? Who do I want to be? Mm. Like, what partner do I want to be? What husband do I want to be? What what brother do I want to be? What son do I want to be? I want to be the best in all areas of my life, not just football. Mm-hmm. So as I went on that journey to understand that I'm more than a player. I'm more than just a footballer. My identity isn't attached to what I do. As God took me on that journey, that is when everything changed. Mm. Everything. And, and would you say that's what, so that was the catalyst, but what what did you see change within yourself um, during that present? What was Jesus doing in your life in that moment? that made you like come out the other side because many people might not see a light at the end of the tunnel, but there is one, you know what I mean? There is 100%. one. 100%. Yeah. The, the, 100%. What, what, was, what was changing? What was happening um, while you was on that process? So honestly, like in that process, it was like, obviously I'd lost my partner. Someone yeah. that, someone that obviously was there for me through everything. Mm-hmm. It was, I was around um, 23 at the time. And, I can remember I was like, hey, this is someone that loves me for who I am, not for what I do, not for what I bring. Not for, Like I said, with my dad, like yeah, it was the same. Yeah, yeah. It was the same. And I was like, hey, no, no, no. I've got to do everything in my power to get this woman back into my life. Hey, boy, listen, sorry to cut you. Bring, man them, listen to what he's saying. Listen, bring <laughs> back classic r and It's raining. The white button up t-shirt is open. The jean, the boot cut jean. Bring it back, boy. Bring it back. Men, fight for your women. Fight for your women. It'll change your life. As clearly, clearly it can. Change my life. It changed my life. life. Honestly, KJ, it changed my life. I said, I'm going to do everything in my power. I remember the day. I'm going to do everything in my power to get this woman back into my life. She, she is me. I'm like, I need her to be the best that I can be. Like, I need her. Mm. And I was like, hey, I'm going to do everything in my power. And it took, hey, bro, KJ, <laughs> bro, man, them that's listening to this, it was long. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I could imagine, boy, fam, I could imagine like long, long. Long, yeah. long, long. And God took me on a real, real yeah. process. And he, it was, it was so deep at the time because it was like that relationship, I didn't value mm. as much as I should. Mm-hmm. 
So anyone that's listening to this that might not be valuing their relationship the way that they should value it, assess it. Mm. Anyone that's lost their relationship that they believe that is for them, go after it with all your heart. Because the word of God says, you know, we can't do it alone. Yeah. <laughs> we no, need a hey, it's true. We need a woman. All right, I'm not gonna listen. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. Since I have met my fiance, my life has been my life has been different. My life is Hallelujah, blessed. bro. I can't imagine not having her around now. Like this is why I'm marrying this woman. She's beautiful. Mm. She's intelligent. She knows how to Aww. get on me to make me better. She's made me better. Amen. Like, no, the, I, hey, listen. I love if it. Want, hey, if you want mushy in it, this is mushy in it. Ah, no, you're gonna make me confess everything to my to, about my woman, man. Like this, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got a portrait behind me. That is what I used to propose to my girl, uh, to my fiance. Hey. But yeah, man, honestly, value it, man. Like we need mm. to, man. It's so easy just to be like, I can just get an XP out. Or, ah. Like, yeah. Oh, she's caught, man. She does this for me, man. It's all good, isn't it? Like, no, no, no. Like, analyze, like Kendra said, analyze and value because you don't want it to be that you're going through something and the thing that God takes away, because God will take away things sometimes, even the things that he's given us. He's mm -hmm. given you your wife. He has. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in that moment, he said, no, 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 no. This needs to change. I'm going to yeah. have to take her away. Yeah. You don't want that. You don't want that to yeah. happen, my uh, gentleman. You really don't. Yeah. So please value them. But that's crazy how God can can literally with a flip of a switch make you realize and it is loss sometimes it's lost sometimes it's that pain that you have to yeah. go through that god allows you to go through sometimes he's sitting there listen i can take it away but if i take it away you're not going to become the person that i need you to be so you're going to go through it you're going to go through it pressure makes diamonds mm hmm Pressure makes time. We need to, we need that pressure sometimes. And mm -hmm. obviously, you went through that. Um, you, you lost, you lost Isabella. Fight, you fought for her back. And in that, in that moment, God was like, "Okay, this is the man that we need. This is the man that I need, yeah. and I would love." And yeah. yeah, I'm glad you got that back because, like, like you said, many men probably won't be able to get that back. And yeah, yo, and and, and bless her as well for Amen. for being having grace. Yes. um for you as well that's that's beautiful true. man absolutely true. beautiful so you know, true that's, man. that's that's crazy man and what would you what would you say for anyone who's going through something similar to yourself like where uh specifically gambling but anything where you feel like they're uh they're going through a period of their life where things just aren't right and they're, they're leaning on things that that actually are not helping them that are hindrance to them like what would you say what is your advice to, uh, to them honestly i would say First of all, that everything happens for a reason. Like what God is doing in your life now is for a reason. And it's something to know about yourself. It's something to highlight within yourself. And that's why like every time something happens externally or happens in my life, I ask, what does that reflect internally? And once you start God will start to reveal within yourself of what it is that you need to fix. Mm. So there's so many times where, for example, like where things become idols, you know, where football for me was something that was, I worshiped, you know, football was something for me that I, that I loved more than God. And God took me on this process of telling me, Kenji, like, You've got to love me more than you love your football. Mm. And that is, that's a process that hurts mm. because it comes with a humbling process. And the humbling process is, <laughs> wouldn't wish it up on anyone because, <laughs> oh, yeah. because mm. it's, it's, it's deep. It's deep. Um, so I would really, I would really say like, reach out to someone, mm. reach out to someone that's, that you trust, um, reach out to someone that you feel, um, that call to there's someone on your heart right now mm. that you feel that you can tell there's someone on your heart right now that you feel that you can share this with and that's what I would advise like I would advise because sometimes we 
it's definitely, you know, we've got to invite Jesus into our lives. We've got to invite Jesus into our surroundings and what we're dealing with and what we're going through for sure. And there's definitely people that can, that Jesus can use in your life as well. So definitely reach out to someone that you feel um, called to reach out to. Yeah, man. And, and, and don't let fear cripple you. Um, mm. When we're in Christ, we are free from, from those things. We are mm. free from, from shame. We are free from fear. Um, they will be there. They'll be lurking, but we don't have to be captive to them. Um, obviously we got that slave where we are no longer saved with fear where I am a child of God like Amen. even if you replay that song in the background to remind yes. you that yo when you go forward when you go forward and, and, and speak to, to people about these situations that fear and shame are not your portion fear and shame is not something that belongs to, to you Amen. and you can go there in confidence that that person will will be the person that they need I just want to I just want to add on to that as well bro um, about judgment mm. because you know you will feel judged you will feel like people looking down on you or feel like you're but that's just a reflection of how you see yourself mm. so you I remember I saw myself like that so that then made other people see me in that way that I thought but it's it's not that it's that you feel that about yourself. So it's just exposing how you see yourself and just swapping it for how God sees you. Mm. Because that's what matters is how he sees you rather than how you see you and how other people see you. So I just wanted to add that on. Um, yeah. Onto what you had just said. Yeah. No, and that, that feeds into beautifully into look, just like what we just experienced. Like at the time of uh, we, we, we were filming this podcast, it's, uh, it's just back off Easter. And... Mm. When Christ died for us, we swapped, we swapped clothes. So the judgment that we feel that we're looking at, Jesus said, no, 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 I'm Let taking that. that. And I'm giving you the clean clothes, the, the fresh mm. clothes, the, God, the clothes that God can see. And he doesn't see the, the sinner, the, the, the broken person. He sees his child. And remember that, guys, that yeah. in Christ, that we, we are God's children. Yes. We're not seeing it like again, like, like Kendra said, we see ourselves a certain way, but God does not see us that way. Amen. God does not see us that way at all. So yeah, man, that's uh, powerful stuff. Um, oh, I mean, I'm having a good time. You having a good time, bro? I'm having a good time. Bro, this hey. is lit, man. Hey, come this on, is now. lit. Come on, <laughs> best, best football Christian podcast you'll ever see on the planet. Um, and shout out to every, all the other podcasts doing their thing out, way out there. Uh, sports Christian podcasts out there. Keep doing your thing, man. We support you as well. Um, question. Since you played in uh, England uh, for so long, actually, no, scratch that. We'll come to that in a second. How did you get from Swansea to Portugal? Because mm. England, Wales is rainy, bruv. Like, Wales is rainy and you, you've traded that for the sun. That's what I mean why your Instagram is lit. I see your Instagram, brother. That's why I'm glowing, bro. Oh, hey, Come on. It's popping. <laughs> it's popping. Look at me. I need to get out there, man. Like, <laughs> it, the, 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 oh, the England man. rain killing me right now, man. Bro. You're out there enjoying, smiling. The teeth is white. It's crazy. Oh. It's crazy, bro. So it got to a point where obviously I was at Swansea for five years. And all I wanted to do is play football. I just yeah. wanted to play. And um, and they offered me a new contract. Mm. And I got a call from Costinha, who was, uh, he won the Champions League with Porto under Mourinho. And he yeah. called me and he says, listen, I, uh, I've, I'm i a manager of this, um, of a team here in Portugal called Nacional. Mm. Um, and I would just love to have you. Like I've seen your games. I've seen the things that you're moving through. I see the, I see, I see how much, you can impact this team. And I said to myself, I said, I hung up the phone and I said, am I going to go to Portugal? Mm. I'd like a, like a thought, like, am I really going to leave this? Yeah. And, and something was calling me there. Mm. And, uh, and I was like, I, had, I thought in my mind, like, nah, but I can't leave Swansea. Like, I can't, like, this is my time now. And I remember 
that week just before I'd had a meeting with the with the chairman at the time and he was like this is going to be your season blah 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 we're going to get a young manager yeah. in uh, Graham Potter came in at the time and he was like he's yeah. going to make sure that you're um that you're going to play and I said president chairman you've said this for five years like you've been saying this that, that mm. for, for this long like is this really going to happen he's like yeah like this is the time now da 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 um and the day after I got a call again from the, the national coach, yeah. uh, Costinha, and he said, come and see it, come and see it. Mm. And I said, okay, let me, let me go and see it. And I went with me and my dad uh, and yeah. my uncle, us three, we went and we flew to, to, to Madeira. And I was like, whoa, it's an island. Like, <laughs> whoa, like this yeah. is mad. I saw a little <laughs> statue of Cristiano Ronaldo. I said, no, hey. bro. I said, hey. Hey. I said, what's he got to do with this? <laughs> anyway, I hear like your your next stop, uh, you will be landing in Cristiano Ronaldo Airport. I was like, what? Oh, we're going yeah. to Portugal. Oh, we're going yeah. to Portugal. <laughs> but anyway, it was his island, and I went there, and I went to the stadium, went to walked on the pitch, and I said, I felt something in my heart, and I was like, wow, like is this where I'm really gonna be? I remember looking up to God, saying, is this where you want me to be? And then we go down to the um. It was like a beachfront. It was like a yeah, yeah beachfront in the, on the island. And honestly, the island's beautiful. Like the mm. most clean island you'll ever see. Like the most beautiful island there is. And I was walking there, and I said, I said to my dad, I said to my dad and uncle, I said, "This is where I need to be. Mm. This is where I need to be. This is where I need to be." And now we have to speak to Swansea <laughs> to hopefully let me go. Yeah. And my dad, and we came to a conclusion, it's like, it's best that you speak to them, like personally, mm -hmm. like you share your experience. So, I, so we flew back to Swansea and I spoke to uh, to the chairman at the time. I said, chairman, thank you so much for this offer. Um, but will you please let me go? Because I have believed like this is where I'm supposed to be. I really want to thank you for the five years that I've had here, for the faith that you've got in me, for the belief that you've got of me, but this is where I need to be. Like, this is where I feel called. And he was like, Kenji, no one's ever come to me like this. Please, you can, you can, yeah. you can go. Because he could have asked for money. He could have asked for loads of things yeah. and, um, and the deal would be off. But I ended up signing a three-year deal at National. And yeah. that's where my life changed. Mm -hmm. My life changed because that's where I got impacted by the Holy Spirit. That's where my wife mm. got impacted. That's where I got baptized. That's where I got married. You know, it holds so much. Um, yeah, it holds so much to who I am today that yeah. it's only by God that I knew that this is where I'm supposed to be. So if anybody yeah. feels anything in their heart uh, for their next step and is questioning the next step, like mm. God will make it so clear of where you're supposed to be. And that might not be luxury football wise, but it will be death for your destiny. It will be impact. It will be, a, it's a must. Now I, I know that feeling that it comes in, in, in different ways for, for us, 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 us normal people. <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, but I know really and truly rather than like, honestly, like when it's the right step, the, the amount of peace that you get in those moments where you're just like, yeah, and you can, and you start to picture every, like all the pictures, the vision starts Serious. coming through. Like, honestly, when, when God is telling you, yeah, listen, this is for you. No fear. I don't think anything beats that feeling. I remember at uni deciding to either go back home or change my course. And the piece that I had from just change to changing my course into what it was at the time, I was like, yeah, like God's God's telling me to God's telling me to stay here, man. I was in again, it's not wasn't glamorous. I was in Middlesbrough. I was wow. in Middlesbrough, bro. Like up north, it was it was it was peak. You know what I mean? Like I did not know why <laughs> I was up there. I was just up there in it. <laughs> Mad. But I ended up staying there for four years, but through mm. that. I ended up going to Canada uh, for wow. three summers in a row, working at a summer camp. I've met lifelong friends. I uh, I, Amen, I got man. to experience like God in a different way, and and he, I got to grow as a person. Like so, yeah. And all that was all because I had that feeling that actually no, I need to stay. I don't need to go home. I just need to. I just need to change course. So yeah, that feeling, wow. people, cherish it. Cherish it. that feeling and do it. Just just yeah. go. For Whatever's it. on go your heart it. now, like do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, one hundred percent, man, one hundred percent. Oh, yo, this is why this guy's always smiling. You can, you know, the sun, he is blessed. <laughs> Everything, bro, the skin popping, of course. Honestly, of course. crazy. Yeah, get me out there, man. Oh, yeah, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> soon land. 
Um, but yeah, that this is what I get now. This is the question I was going to ask you. Since you've been in England for so long, and obviously play for Man City, we won't talk about that. It's okay. Uh, then then Man United, and then uh, then Swansea. Um, who is your favorite Premier League team? Wow. What do you wait? What do you think? I I'm going to I'm going to say Man United because he was there for so long. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Manchester Manchester United's got it's got something in my heart, man. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely got something in my heart, especially while being there for so long and just understanding the environment and stuff like that of what it is. Like it's uh, yeah, it's definitely on my heart, man. United, yeah. bro. Uh, good. Hey, listen. Thank you, thank you. I don't know why, but me. We... The boys and got a podcast and Manchester United have a very special relationship. <laughs> We've had me and Man United fan as a co-host. We've got we had Adrian Igalo while he's playing for United, mm. and we also had Anti Alonga while he's playing for United. Ah, beautiful, absolutely. And now ex Man United as well. Ah, beautiful. I'm lo- I'm in I'm in Dreamland. I love it, man. This is why God is good. Um, oh man. But yeah, okay. How do you? Th- okay, so. Last season wasn't really that good for Manchester United. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Um, it was, it was, it was not good mm. at all. Um, very, very, uh, very poor season. But now, Eric Ten Hag um, is here. Man, like, El Senor Casemiro is there. Obviously, my, my favourite Man United player, Marcus Rashford, on absolute fire up uh, how are you finding manchester united now after especially after the season they had before like where do you think they're at and how well do you think they're doing i think honestly like it's good to see like a coach take control i think that's what it looks like it looks like he's really created a culture um of what he believes manchester united should be and that's why you know, <laughs> that's why in the Bible it says we got to pray for the put people in the right positions. <laughs> because <laughs> at the end of the day, like we got to put people in the right positions at that right time. And I believe that Eric Ten Hag is doing an amazing job, and I believe that he's there for the at the right time, at the right moment to create um, a new Manchester United. Yeah, I think I think Kenji that you should call him up. You're ba- like he's Dutch. You're basically Dutch <laughs> as well. You know. <laughs> like, you need, yo, if, if hey, big woot, big woot has got a got a move to United. You know, why can't you, but get you, hey, bring bring Kenji back. Hashtag <laughs> back. Hashtag get me back, back there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag <laughs> back, man. Oh, yeah, nah, that's great. All I know is bold is best. That's what I. That's what I said. Amen, I love, I bro. Oh, Amen. I love it, Hag, man. I think he's doing an excellent job. Um, the team is turning around, and I do believe that. With the right backing of of Eric, um, they we can go on. I say we like I'm playing, but we can go we can go on and uh, and do some some special things. And also, hashtag Kari, uh, Gare back. That's that's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see that just for a season, man. Just for one season. I love it. Um, but yeah, okay, yeah. So I got a question for you. Mm. Your 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 dad is from Suriname. Yes. And your mom is from I can't actually pronounce where it's from. Curacao. 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 Yeah. yeah. Your mom's from Curacao. What was what what was it like telling your dad that actually I'm paying for mom's country and not yours? Because your dad's the coach, right? I was Suriname yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So what was he it? was the coach, yeah. Yeah, he was the coach. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that sitting down with him, like, okay, pops. I enjoying you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it ain't happening. I'm going to pay for my I'm going to pay for my honestly, that, all right. honestly, that would have been mad if that happened, but it wasn't a possibility at the time. So mm. I didn't, I couldn't actually play for Suriname because there wasn't, they wouldn't do dual passports. So then my dad yeah. actually took that process of making it possible for the passports to, mm. uh, to be available. And that was only yet, like two years after I was already playing for Curacao. Um, so, so I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. Um, at the time I got the opportunity, um, to go to the gold cup with Curacao and it was an experience that it was unbelievable to be honest with you. Like to, to, to know that you've made your mum proud, your grandma Mm -hmm. proud, a whole nation proud, um, that has, that are looking up to you to play for the country 
like the island and just being around like in the island like it's a feeling that you cannot describe playing for your country so it's an absolute honor to be honest hey come on now come on uh my family are jamaican descent uh so we're, we're my family from jamaica so if you we ever beat jamaica them, <laughs> Uh, uh, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> we are we're, we're going through the change listen we're going through changes the 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 board the the, the J, jfa are changing we've got a new coach the adidas deal, bruv you seen the adidas deal yo forget about your nike deal bruv the adidas deal yes the adidas kits are nice nah, they're, they're good they're good they're good they're good they're good we've got man like they're good. listen we hey, good. listen we could have such a sick team we just mm. need to convince like uh, the Mari Gray, uh, mm. who else is there that you need to convince? Uh, we've already got Pinocchio players, players for Jamaica, obviously Antonio, Rava Morrison, um, Ethan Led, Ethan, please just, just sign up, <laughs> sign up to the Ethan. team. Yeah, 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 yeah man. He's uh, a nah, there's boy, potential, man. There's, there's potential, potential there, potential there, but guys, listen, I know not many of you may keep up with Curacao and their national team, but. Kenji got to, got to, I can't believe it. I'm so gasping about it as well. Kenji got to play against one of the greatest players of all time. Maybe the greatest to many. Lionel Messi. What was wow. it like playing against him? What was it like, like just being on the pitch? Wow. I know you're supposed to win, but... And you want your team to do well, but surely sometimes you just stand there it's like I'm supposed to be marking my man. But look at, look at Messi. Okay. Man. Like, look. KJ, KJ, surreal, yeah. surreal. Like it was an ex- surreal experience when I heard that Curacao were playing against Argentina. I said, "Huh? That's impossible. That is impossible." Like that was not that can't be possible that we're playing against them, especially their second game back from winning the World Cup. Mm. So what? They've got the three stars on the shirt and that as well. Nah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, nah, that's impossible for a small island of 150,000 people to be mm. playing against Argentina. Like it's it was it was impossible. And that's what God revealed to me. God revealed to me that. Everything's possible. Mm -hmm. What you thought was impossible is possible. And that is what, that's what's so crazy about this whole experience. Because as my career went on, as your career goes on, it's like, well, am I going to be playing with these players again? Am I going to be playing with the best players again? Am I going to be playing with Messi? You know, Messi's Mm -hmm. arguably the best player that's ever lived and ever touched the football. In my opinion, the best ever. And I got to play with him. Like the day before, I remember like praying that I could just walk out the tunnel with him. And before the game, like just be like, yes, Messi. Like, you know, when you're doing that, (laughs) when national anthem and then you're walking past, I'm like, yes, bro. Like I was so gassed and visualized (laughs) it before doing it. And it was just honestly atmosphere crazy. And just to see the presence that he actually holds on the pitch, like the presence that he holds in the country, like how people see him, they see him with their eyes and cry. <laughs> people look at him and fall up and fall on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the impact this guy has. And I said, and God said, how much more are you Kenji that's got the Holy Spirit inside of him? I said, Oh Lord, you're right. <laughs> hey, the authority that we hold, what about us? Mm. We we have mm. the power to to change environments. We have the power to 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 change to change things, man. Change atmospheres. Mm. So yeah, like that's what God revealed to me through that time. But honestly, it was an experience that I just thank God that I got to experience. Oh, right, nah, that's that's crazy, man. And you know what? Yeah, guys, just so you know, it's true. I'm gonna show you. We're just gonna put it on and say, "Boom!" There he is. Aye. You know what I'm saying? He's right there. And wow. I, what did you? Okay, my man can't speak English. So what on earth did you say to him? <laughs> so, so obviously I speak a little bit of Portuguese, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was just like, "Hola, tudo bem? Como estás? Como estás, Messi? 
And then I was just like, you are amazing. Started speaking English, bro. I just yeah. said, you're amazing, man. Like, it's an honor to be here in your presence, to be honest. You're the yeah. world's best ever player, the best player to touch a football. So thank you for everything that you've done for the sport and everything you've done for the game. And I guess he was just nodding, just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no idea what you were saying. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> Yo, that's so funny. Yeah. You took, who took the photo for you, by the way? Was that teammate or? So check this. I don't know if this is a good thing because this is a, this is, but I'm gonna reveal it anyway. Yeah. So at half time, I said to one of my teammates, I said, "Yo, grab my phone and bring it on the bench." <laughs> so he grabbed my phone. He grabbed my phone. And brought it onto the bench. Yeah. On it, so I came off, and I was like, "Wow, like I've got my phone here now." As soon as this final whistle blows, I'm running to him. <laughs> so the final whistle goes now, and I'm and I've, I'm a bit stiff from the game, so I'm like hobbling a bit. But I'm jogging. The keeper swapped shirts with him, so I'm like, "Oh!" <laughs> I asked him as well. I asked him three times. In the game, in the game, I asked him three times. I said, Messi, after the game, shit. Camisa, camisa, camisa. Man said, man said, yeah, 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 after, yeah, 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 after. after. Yeah, see, man, it was like, see, anyway, see, yeah. Yeah, see, see, see. <laughs> At half time, I run, I run to him. And obviously, we're, we're together. Like, he plays on the right, I play on the left. So, we're, like, yeah. getting a lot of contact. So, I'm going to him. I'm saying, hey, man, Messi, like, you sure after, innit? Like, after. Start the second half. I go, hey, don't forget, you know, yeah. shit after. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, as soon as the final whistle blows, the goalkeeper runs to him, oh. gets his shirt, bro. I was fuming. But anyway, I was yeah. like, get get some. I give someone my phone, take a picture, and I was just gassed. I was gassed oh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's mad. You got the photo, you got the action shot of you guys. Yeah, you man. Guys. You're trying to take him down. Trying to damage the goat in that, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's crazy. Like the, that is such a cool experience. The fact that you yeah, got to man. play against like someone is like who will go down forever in history of the of this game. Like it's crazy, man. God is it's good, surreal, man. man. God is he good. really is. He really is. And because he's also a man of faith as well, we we it's highly mm. uh, documented about Messi and his faith. And the fact you were saying about the aura, the the atmosphere changes when he's around, it made me it made me think when I was when I was um, thinking about the the podcast, I was like, yo, if Messi's got this responsibility, how important is it that Christian oh. footballers show their faith on the pitch and off the pitch as well? Like, how important is it for you guys to actually stand up and mm. let it be known that yo, this is what we believe? Mm. It's it's vital, man. It's vital and especially because, so God has took me on a journey where it's like, obviously I'm way more than a footballer. Mm. You know, God has revealed to me like, Kenji, you're, you're my son. You know, and as my son, I want you to go and show the world who I am through what you do. And my whole reason to why I play football changed. You know, I mm. play football to glorify him, to glorify Jesus in my life. And that is a responsibility that I've, that I've taken on, but not through my own strength, through Christ that lives in me. So we have that responsibility because we have a platform to touch people. You know, we have a platform to touch people. And it's important that um, through, through that, you know, we get to glorify our creator. Mm. Yo. That's mad. And the fact that you guys can be that example as well to many mm. is, is crazy, man. And the platform that you guys have been given, like of all the sports like in the world, this is the biggest and the best mm. sport. And the fact that you guys are using it for uh, for God's glory and let it be known that, yo, like, like we're here. We, we know right now there's a lot of other uh, agendas and faiths being propped up uh, by the sport as well. But... Mm. God's letting it know, like, yeah, listen, you, you can't drown him out. You know what I mean? He's it's here true, to be man. heard and here to be seen. True. Mm. Because there's nothing... <laughs> John John Bostock said this to me, right? Mm. On the first time I ever spoke to him. And he said, there's nothing more important than your eternal destination. Mm. 
And I was like, it just triggered something inside of me when I Mm. first spoke to him. And I was like, wow, yeah. I'm so worried about this next game. I'm so worried about scoring this next goal. I'm so worried about um, this new contract. When this is the goal, you know, your eternal Mm. destination is way more important. And you got to know him. Know him. Know the man that made, know the creator that made you. And that's when from that day, bro, like, but that's why I thank John for his life, man, because yeah. he's impacted me so much um, in my journey and in my walk in faith mm. that it's, um, yeah, I really thank God for his life. Yeah, yeah. John, John's a special guy, 100%. Yeah. Man. Like, in fact, every time I've done this podcast or we've, we've been talking, uh, texting and stuff, you'll drop something and you just like, of course. Boom. It makes sense. You know what I mean? The boot, like mind, mind gone. You know what I mean? Like John, John, thank you again. I, I always appreciate John and uh, everything he's done. And yeah, man, guys, let's keep supporting this platform, man. Like the vision that John has for, for this platform and not just this, but the 316 uh, clothing range, the, the agency mm-hmm. as well. He's just started. Keep supporting this man because, bruv, the, the kingdom... The kingdom mm. got plans for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. The kingdom's Amen. got plans for him. So yeah, please, let's keep supporting him uh, mm. in that and everything that he's done. All right. Okay, listen, Kenji, we've got some time left still. So there's some things I want to, I need to address. First of all, um, you need to go find someone and whoever, whoever like is the head of it, you need to go chat to them because Wikipedia have done you a dirty. What have they done? They have, they have stopped documenting your career <laughs> literally it goes to like it, it, on the side it, it, tell, it says you're, you're playing for Boa Vista but on the like the, the detailed part where you're ty- the type in the club career that you get to National and then it stops it wow. says you go on a you go to es- uh, Esteroli is it, is it Esteril Esteril yeah it says you go there it stops done Mad, and it, like I'm like, raw. I said, they can't be doing Kenji like that. They mentioned you playing against uh, Jamaica in 2019. No, no, no mention of Argentina and Messi. Your career stats ends at your low move. I'm just saying, you need to go chat to someone because that is. Hey, that's unacceptable, that man. <laughs> that's unacceptable. <laughs> nah, man. Wikipedia. Don't don't listen to Wikipedia, man. Don't use oh, yeah. that. Don't use that platform. That well, that's banned now. That platform's banned. Oh, yeah. What are we saying? Cancel, ca- cancel Wiki and that. Yeah, Wiki's done. <laughs> Hashtag Wiki done. Literally, I do. I, I do. I use it to obviously do do, do some research mm. and get some background. And when I was like, wait, where's this? Where's this Boa Vista? It's very Vista stuff. Where's that going? I was so confused. I'm like, no way have they done that to him. But yeah, yeah. Um, you need to go chat to um you need to go chat, chat to, to Wiki, man. Wikipedia. Yeah, 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 get that sorted. Um, you said you had a podcast. What mm. podcast is it? Yeah, talk to me, man. What podcast is this? When when was it? What was it about? Like so I, when I went to Madeira, I yeah. started to to really invest heavily into in myself. I started to really see that I was obviously more than a player, I started to understand like I wanted to be the best in every area of my life. And I realized that mindset was a huge, huge impact in football. And because I invested so much in my mindset and in coaches and mentors for my mind, I realized that what I have, like I need to give to others. Like I need to give, give this to other people. And I started my company on the ball. Um, which is basically personal development and mindset coaching for professional yeah. athletes. So through that, we had uh, the podcast where I would get players to come on and share their story. Yeah. And they would come on and share their story because we go through this journey of football, um, but we don't really talk about what it's really like. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so I was like really passionate about that, really passionate about uh, players coming on and sharing their story. And we've had some amazing stories on there, to be honest. Um, of of players that are that shared their career and shared the things that they experienced as well. Um, so that's called conversations with Kenji uh, with oh, a K yeah. um, for anyone that's interested. 
Um, but then from there, you know, we I did the the on the ball squad where we basically came yeah. together, and I also did some um, some coaching sessions with players as well. So it was uh, yeah, it was something that um, that I moved into. Hey, nice, and obviously you can see. On YouTube, you can see man's got the nice Yeti mic, bruv. You know what I mean? You know what it is. Man came prepared. Literally, I was like, oh, I, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was talking to Kenji. I was like, oh, make sure you've got uh, your your earphones. I thought, ah, oh, probably won't have a mic. Most players don't have microphones. <laughs> my man was like, oh, do you want me to uh, you want me to add my microphone again as well? You want me to plug that into? I was just like, you know what? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I do, bro. And then when I see him just... Pop it onto the desk. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is serious. I, could, I like that. I like that. I so, yeah, it. man, that's it. Go check out uh, Kenji's podcast. Um, I'm sure, hopefully, you, if it's not returned yet, you'll probably be back soon. Um, who knows? Hopefully, um, we will get that and some more from Kenji. Uh, more news uh, later on in the podcast. Um, we like to do it. We like to have some, like to have some fun uh, on the Boys and God, uh, God podcast. And uh, one of them is asking you guys, the the footballers, what is your ultimate five aside team? All time players, you get oh. five. Who would you pick? Five aside, yeah, down power league. Who you, who you, who you taking there? Goalie as well, yeah. Yeah, goalie and four outfield players. Okay, got it. Goalie Van der Sar. Wait, come on. Then we've got, oh, the fit, you know, like, so, mm, okay, I'm going to go attack because the defender, okay, so we've got Ronaldinho, we got Messi. Oh, okay, okay. We've got Ronaldinho, Messi, R9. Ooh. And then Why we've got, defense, a, and then we've got, you know what we're going to do? Hmm. You know what it is, yeah? There's certain people that are coming. So I've got, I've got, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not playing no defense, bro. I'm putting Kaka in there, bro. Oh, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going all out attack. No defenders, bro. <laughs> Oi, man said bond defending. We are sco no, you're scoring. We got five Van der Sar in that, bro. Yeah. Oi, man said if you're scoring five, we're scoring seven, eight, hundred, nine, ten. bro. Oh, yeah, I've, got holding, I've got Kaka holding. I've got Kaka Kaka holding. I've got um, R nine at the top. Then we got Messi and Ronaldinho. Bro, oh, no yeah, one's beating the, us, bro. The, the, the to, oh. No one's beating us, bro. Oh yo 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 yo! People are gonna come for you in the comments saying you got no <laughs> football IQ. Where's the balance, ah. bro? No one's be bro. No one's beating us. Come to Power League now. <laughs> 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 oh yo, that is a different one. I need to remember John. Yeah, I need to get John, and I need to remember his, and then we can do. I think you know what we should do at the end of like the season two, we should get everyone's five aside. Five aside, yeah, yeah, And yeah, do yeah, like yeah, a yeah, like yeah, a yeah. like a poll tournament to see whose one was the best. Who's one? Um, Hundred. I think I think yours might. Yours will get far, you know. I people, people bro, are here for it. you don't need defenders in five aside. What do you mean? <laughs> five aside is about keeping the ball and scoring. Oh yeah. Listen, when you when when you're like us, we need defenders, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can run. I can run forward really quick. Don't ask me to come back. <laughs> oh, oh man, man. Oh, I love it. Um, what has been your favorite goal that you have scored in your career? Ooh, there's two that really stand out right now. There's one when I was at Northampton on loan. I scored yeah. um in the cup against West Brom. I scored the winning pen and hey. we got through and we got through and we played against United in the next round. So that was, that was quite crazy. Ooh, okay, nice. Um, nice. yeah, to play against players, obviously that I've yeah. played with and stuff like that. So that was a great experience um, scoring the winning pen. Um, and one recently against uh, Basos, Basos de Ferreira. I mm. literally come inside mm. and I whip it and I whip it in the, in the top bins, man, because, like that was a moment also where it was just a lot. Like I was been on the bench a couple of times and yeah. I was like, Hey, I'm getting myself back into it. Like, this is my opportunity. Now I'm going to make sure that God is glorified through this game. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I get the ball cut inside and I just said, bang it. And I banged it in and um, God was glorified, man. So hey, we thank him. That, you had that Mr. Whippy 95. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on. Yeah, man. Whip that in top bins. Now. I love that. Um, 
What is your favorite Bible verse and why is your mm. favorite Bible verse? My favorite Bible verse is Matthew 7, 7. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Mm. And it's my favorite because it's kind of, it brought me back to the story again of my cousin. You know, mm. my dad sharing with me, you know, when you seek, you shall find. Mm. Um, and then also to know when, you know, to know that when you knock, like the door's going to be opened to you. Like it doesn't matter what you've done in your life. It doesn't matter what you've, um, you know, how deep you've gone into an area. Like God is always there with open arms. And just knowing that, you know, gives me so much peace um, in my heart to know that, I fall short, but mm. by his grace and his mercy and the spirit that lives in him, it lives in me, you know, and, and that's what, that's what I need to continue to feed. So yeah, that one's really speaks to me, man. Hey, nice. Nice. Thanks for that. And then um, one, one last question um, before we, we, we about to close out. Uh, what advice would you give to young Christian footballers in the, uh, in the careers now? What, what, how would you guide them forward? Um, not only just in their football, but also within their faith as well. So definitely know that God is first. And when I say that, it's it's easy to say, but harder to do, <laughs> especially when football has been your first love for most. It's been your first thing that you're doing everything in your power to, to be. Um, it's difficult. And that's why, you know, God is the only one that's going to help you through every situation um, that you're going through. So it's definitely to lean on him and not lean on your own understanding. Uh, to trust in him and, you know, and not lean on your own understanding. Um, but that is what I would share, you know, to, to really, to really put God first um, mm. in that for sure. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kenji. Right, guys, we are, t t we are at the end of the podcast. I actually could do this for another what, hour and a half, two hours, three, maybe four. <laughs> for like, sure. This has been like, this has been a, uh, such a good part. Of it. I I've absolutely loved every minute of it. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for listening to the pod. We have some exciting news for you. So we have a new host that will be joining me uh, throughout the rest of the season two. Uh, John will be busy a lot with everything that he's doing. So he'll, he'll be around. He'll be around. But the new co-host that we're going to have is the man we have just been speaking to, to today. Man like Kenji. Aye. For the rest of season two, we're going to be doing, we're going to be, me and him, KJ, Ken, KG, going to be together interviewing, talking to, uh, talking to and sitting down with some of your favourite Christian footballers. So uh, we did this to make sure that you got to know him a bit more. And, uh, and yeah, and then we can move forward. So I'm excited uh, moving forward. Yeah, I am yeah. um... Gassed. KJ, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, when John asked me to do this, I just couldn't say no. And um, it's going to be an absolute privilege and an honor to, to be alongside KJ, um, to, for, for God to be really transmitted through this platform, because I know that it's going to touch everyone that God wants to touch through us. So we pray, keep us in your prayers and, um, and definitely um, stay tuned because got some big big things coming mm -hmm. and got some real exciting things that are going to be coming as well and for any footballer or semi-pro footballer um, that is listening to this right now come and join our weekly calls we also like as much as you know the the um, the instagram is popping the podcast is here and the the got the the the, the gear, you know, there's also a lot that goes on inside. Um, so if you are a footballer, if you are a semi-pro footballer, come and join a community because the word of God says, iron sharpens iron. Mm. And so man shall sharpen man. So we need brothers uh, to sharpen each other. So please come and join us. You'll be filled with brothers that are walking the same walk as you, experiencing mm -hmm. the same things that you're experiencing. Um, so I just wanted to share that as well. Um, for, for any brother that's listening to this right now. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, that's it, guys. Get get signed up, man. You'll be in a community um, where away from us mad fans, you know what I mean? <laughs> where you guys can really deep dive into your lives, yeah. have that personal connection as well, and have that personal growth, and have that community with other footballers. So, yeah, guys, make sure you sign up to that if you're a pro or semi-pro footballer. Oh, Kenji, man. Kenji, Kenji. Why why you do this to me, man? Why you make me want to stay for longer than, than I like... <laughs> No, nah, it's been, honestly, it's been absolutely lit, bro. It's been absolutely yeah. lit. And and again, for any footballer that's listening to this or any person that's listening to this, um, just know that God has such a huge plan in your life. Um, the way that he's taken me um, on my journey and the way that he's shaped me and shaped, continuing to shape me and continuing to... Uh, shape KJ as well he's doing in your life so keep him in the center of everything that you do and everything will be the way that he wants it amen we're just going to end off in prayer like we always do, amen, always do um, on the pod so uh, yeah. yes so dear lord I just want to thank you for for Kenji I want to thank you for his life I thank you for the career and the journey that you've taken him on thank you for the man that he has become uh, thank you for his wife and the impact and the role that she plays within Kenji's life. His yes, father, Lord. his mother, his whole family, Lord. I mm. thank you for everything that I've been doing in Kenji's life. Lord, I just want to pray for Kenji right now. Pray that you stay with him always, now and forever. That you keep guiding him in the ways of mm. you. You keep showing him where to go in his football career, Lord. Lord, when he plays, I pray that his body is robust and does not suffer any major injuries, Lord. That he can see Amen. the ages of 35, 38 of playing football, Lord, the thing that he loves. Lord, we thank you for his talents, Lord. We thank you for the blessing that you've put over his life. And as he goes on his career, that he always remembers that he is more than just a player. He is yes, not a footballer. He is a Christian and a, a child of God first, Lord. And football mm -hmm. is something that he can use for your kingdom and your glory. Thank you so much for, for what you're doing with, with the Ballers and God podcast, Lord. Yes, thank you for his return. We, yes, we thank Lord. you that it's back, Lord. And I pray that it comes back bigger and better than before, that we have all the guests that we need, that all the guests that people want, that we can have good conversation that can facilitate discussion and faith and people can really listen and be blessed by what they're hearing in these podcasts, Lord. Lord, I pray season two is amazing. And Lord, I pray for everyone who's listening. I pray that they are blessed, that you you continue to be with them, you guide them, you comfort them, no matter whatever they're going through. If they're under, if they're in the in the in the mountains and the mountain top, feeling good. If they're in the valleys, feeling low, Lord, I pray that you remind them that they you are with him always. You're with them always That's in those hard. situations, and all they have to do is turn to you, and the light will be at the end of the tunnel. Where no matter mm. where they are, no matter what they're going through, no matter who they are. They can always turn to you, Lord. I thank you so much. And let the podcast keep rolling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right, Beautiful, guys. man. Thank you. No problem, man. No problem. Right, guys. That is a episode one of season two kicked off. That was Kenji Gare. That was KJ Milligan. We will be back with another footballer, another Christian, another brother in Christ on the podcast very soon. So guys, stay blessed. Keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, hashtag Gore back. We need that. <laughs>